In this video, we're going to learn how to make these shapes in Adobe Illustrator. Hi, my name is Esther Nariyoshi. I am an illustrator, designer, and a top teacher on Skillshare. You're watching my quick snack series here, where I explain how to use Adobe Illustrator in short episodes for designers and illustrators of all skill levels. If you haven't already, feel free to check out the link and download your set of goodies. All right, let's get started. So first, when you start the program, you can create a new file. It doesn't really matter the size and the specifics of the file because everything can be changed later without affecting negatively against your quality of your illustration. So this is a huge advantage of using vector programs like Adobe Illustrator. In case you're curious, this is my canvas size. So it's 1920 by 1080. Once you are in the program, press M on your keyboard. It will take you to the rectangle tool. And then when you long press this button, you will see a whole list of different shapes that you can make. This group is called shape group. So go ahead and choose a fill color. In this case, I'm gonna sample one of my colors right here. So I'm gonna press I on my keyboard for the eyedropper tool and then go back to M. In my workflow, I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. It really speeds up your workflow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on drag over here. It will give me a rectangle. Before I release my cursor, if I hold the shift key on my keyboard, it will give me a perfect square. So I'm just gonna go ahead and release it. So as you might have noticed that when I click and drag, it starts at a corner. So if you click on the upper right hand corner and drag down diagonally, it will start from the upper right hand corner. However, sometimes you do wanna start drawing from right in the middle. If that's the case, you wanna hold your option key, your alt key on your PC, your cursor will turn into a target icon and you can just click it will grow out a rectangle or square right from the middle. It's the same thing for other shapes as well. Whenever you want to draw right from the middle, you can hold the option key. So I'm just going to delete this guy. Currently, I'm using pixels for my unit. Maybe sometimes you do want to create something that is exactly to a certain dimension. So if that's the case for you, Make sure you have the M selected you have, or you can click on your rectangle tool and then just click on your artboard once. It will give you the dialog that allows you to put in the exact dimension that you want. For example, if I want 500 by 500 pixels and you can just go ahead and click OK. However, sometimes, even if you're using the pixel unit, if you wanna create something that is under inches, you can type the number and unit, even if it's different from the document default. As you can see, Illustrator will translate that two inches into your current unit. So I'll do two inches again, and then click on okay. So this little square is two inches by two inches. All right, let's move on to the next shape, which is ellipse or oval or circle. I'm gonna skip the rounded rectangle tool for now because I like to round my corners with the live corners, which I will cover in the next episode about selections. So stay tuned for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the ellipse tool or L on your keyboard and just click and drag. It's very similar to the rectangle tool. Again, if you want a perfect circle, hold your shift key. And if you want to draw from the middle, hold your option key. And you can hold both shift and option that will let you do both. So that's pretty neat. One more thing about the dialogue. Say that if you want your ellipse tool to be one quarter of 500 pixels, and you're just not feeling super mathy today. So you can do 500 pixels and then divide it by four and type pixels 
and then just jump to the next line by pressing tab. Illustrator will help you with the math. So that's very much appreciated. I'm gonna press four for this one as well. And then just click on okay. So this little guy is exactly 125 pixels by 125 pixels. If you want to duplicate your current shape, you can always just select your shape and then copy and paste by pressing Command C for copy and Command V for paste. But you don't really have control over where it's gonna be pasted. In this case, you can select your original shape and hold the option key. As you can see, the single arrow turns into double arrow and then just start dragging. It will make a duplicate for you. And if you want the duplicate to stay on the same horizon, make sure you hold shift key as you move. Same thing if you want the movement to be perfectly vertical, you can hold your option key and shift key to drag. As you might have noticed that as I move my cursor around, you see the pink words popping up. This is called smart guides. Basically it will help your design to be more neat. So this one reminds me that I'm traveling along the path and if I hit a uh, anchor point, it will change to anchor. If I hold my option to duplicate, it will show me the relationship between my new shape as well as the surrounding elements. So that's pretty helpful. If you want to turn your smart guides on, you can go ahead and click on view and two thirds down the road, just make sure you have a check mark before the smart guides. All right, moving on. Let's see if we can make any polygons. So if you click on your shape group, the number four option is called polygon tool. So go ahead and click this one, click and drag, but don't release it yet. Because if you click the up and down arrow, that will change the size of your polygon. If the number is three, you may have guessed we have a triangle. So this triangle is kind of wobbly. If you want it to sit upright, you can hold your shift key and this will make it more stable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and release it. At this point, if I click on my V on the keyboard, which is the selection tool, it will bring out the bounding box at the almost the corner of the bounding box, when you hover over, you see this diamond icon as well as the plus and minus sign. If you click and drag this diamond up and down, you can change the number of sides from there as well. If you made a hexagon and you want to turn it back to triangle, you can just drag it up to reduce the number of sides. So you don't always have to make new ones. Similar to all other shapes that we have covered, if you want to define the dimension of your polygon to the exact pixel level, you can always just select it and click on your artboard once, and then you can decide the radius or number of sides from there. So that's pretty neat as well. So I'm just gonna go back. If you click on your polygon, whether it's a triangle or hexagon, whatever you have just created, and you can go over to shape. It's on your property panel on the upper right hand corner. Just click on shapes and you can add or subtract sites from there as well. And then you can also add a very precise rotation. You can change the corner that you want. For instance, if you want the corner to be rounded, you can go ahead and click on the rounded corner and then just give it a different radius. Let's say 20 pixels. As you can see, our corners are rounded. Actually, you don't really have to type pixel. It will just go to the default unit of your document. 
Let's do a quick review by recreating the lineup on screen. So go ahead and press L for ellipse tool on your keyboard and hold shift as you drag. And then this will give you a perfect circle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click C for scissors tool to kind of split my anchor points here and the bottom one as well. So basically I turned one circle into two halves. So I'm gonna delete one of these. If you click on this shape, it's not a closed shape, even though it appears exactly the same. Technically I can just move on to the next one, but I would like to deal with the closed shapes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press P on my keyboard for pen tool and then click on the top one. And then as I go down, you will see a circle next to my cursor that shows me that my shape is enclosed. It's just a personal preference thing. So I'm just gonna click V for the selection tool or click on the solid cursor right here and hold option and drag. I'm using shift, so it's perfectly horizontal. And then I wanna create a circle that is the exact same height, but I already forget the number I used. So I'm just gonna click on my ellipse tool and click on my artboard once. It's gonna activate whatever the last dimension that I made. Now I know it's 392 pixels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on okay. Move on to the hexagon over here. Click on my polygon tool and up arrow to make six sides and then hold shift to make it sit right. So this one is a bit taller than my other shapes. So I still wanna go ahead and click on my circle and then just check on the transform panel right here on the upper right hand corner. And I can see the width and height is 392. So I'm just gonna make it the same. Click on my hexagon tool, transform. I want the height to be 392. Okay, let's select all these guys and move it aside. Now I want to go ahead and create a squished triangle right here. Still the polygon tool, click and drag, down arrow, to reduce the sides and then hold shift key. At this time, I wanna kind of rotate this to 90 degree. So I'm gonna press E on my keyboard to use my free transform tool, or you can click on this icon right here. As you hover over the boundary outside, which is called the bounding box, and hold your shift key. You can rotate based on multiples of 45 degrees and then it's sitting to the right direction. Now we have the right direction, still having the free transform tool selected. I'm gonna hover over to the tip and then just scooch it over a tiny bit. And then I wanna duplicate this shape by holding option and shift. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another rectangle. Make it sit upright and E for free transform. I'm gonna make this group a tiny bit smaller. So go ahead and click and drag. Make sure you have the whole thing selected. Press E on your keyboard for free transform and hold shift as you drag one of the corners down so that you have the proportion locked. And then you can go ahead and create the last one, which is the rectangle, which is M on your keyboard. I wanna make the sides perfect. So I'm holding shift key. All right. So now we have created every shape. I'm gonna make the colors right as well. So I'm gonna select one of my shapes and then just sample the colors. 
As we have covered before, it's the keyboard shortcut I, and then press down command or control key on your PC to temporarily switch to the selection tool and then click on your target and then sample the color. Just go ahead and do the same for the rest. So I'm pressing, whenever I switch to the selection tool, that means that I'm pressing the command on my keyboard. So this will just save me tons of time. Over here, we have the shapes back to back, which means that there's zero pixel, zero space in between. You can manually move it and just rely on your smart guides, but I have an easier way to do the same thing. So go ahead and select this whole group and move it to the middle sort of and click on the first one that you want to align to and then select your alignment, which is this icon right here. But if you don't have it, you can go to window and then find the line and click on it. So at the bottom, there is distribute spacing. If you don't see it, you can click on the hamburger tool over here and then show options. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the horizontal distribute spacing. If I wanna have 10 pixels between each shape, I'm just gonna press 10 and click on the distribute. So now I can be sure that there's 10 pixels in between. So this is one of the neat tools that's super helpful if you want to keep your design super organized. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Go check out my Skillshare classes by clicking the link below to get a free trial. I will see you next time.